Hi everyone, it's the Machin Page Act podcast number five. Uh, if you join us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Do it right now. Things are flying up. It's been very, very pleasant indeed. Um, last week <laughs> was interesting. Um, we discovered there's we a didn't whole. We recorded it before the Barcelona game, did we? Well, we definitely recorded it before the Barcelona game, and we also found out that uh, Tommy Robinson's got a lot of very vocal fans on the old on the old internet, um, which was hilarious. Be um, cool. Big call. I'm made up. I'm made up. You know, they, these these right wing snowflakes, they just can't handle people challenging their opinions. Um, right, we're going to dive straight into it. We're going to be doing the page in a second. We're going to get through some news topics of things that are mad things that we've seen in and around the world and the internet this week. A little bit of a deep dive on Mr. Chris Pajak again this week. And then we're getting into some of your random questions and some life coaching as well. Um, should we. What are we going to do for the page jingle? Thanks very much to Kev Wright who sent us the jingle last week. But no thanks. But no thanks. Be better, Kev. You said yourself you can be better, so What's be his best better. Way? What are you sending it to us for? Like? Don't send... Fucking, well, imagine that. Imagine going to a job interview and not putting your best foot forward. Kev, that's on you. I can, we should have even used it. If you'd, not, if, I, if you'd said it wasn't your best work, I wouldn't have used it. I just felt a bit sorry because you'd sent it and I thought... Maybe that is his best work. I kind of liked it. I thought it was rubbish. Um, um, so it's the purge, the purge. Um, Chris, pick a, th- pick a thing that's done your head in this week. UEFA. UEFA's done your head in yeah, this week. Uh, yeah, do you know, and the thing is, right, you know, we've been talking about World Cup finals as stage, European finals, for quite some time. Now, Baku is just ridiculous. And I know it's not Liverpool that are involved, and I know that it's Arsenal and Chelsea, but that's absolutely stupid. Yeah. So do you know the reason why they've only got 6,000 fans each going? Because they basically didn't... Re- they, they, they set that as a limit for how many how many people that could be handled coming in. Right, because the airport can only handle 15,000 people coming into it. This is a European Cup final with 67,000 people going to it. Yeah. Yet they've staged it in a city with one international airport that will allow 15,000 passengers through the door. So they have now capped 6,000 fans from each of the two sides in there. That's just stupid. First of all, there's no direct flights from a lot of major cities yeah. around the rest of Europe. But then to also, like, you know, and then they're talking about like, oh yeah, but you know, it, it, this was decided two years ago. Pick a fucking city that can handle it then. Yeah. Baku actually went for the Champions League final as well this year, <laughs> right? And there was only two grounds up for it. It was the one, the Metropolitan, no, no, or whatever it's called in Madrid, yeah. that we're going to, slash you, and it was the one in Baku. So Baku might have staged both of these finals had it not been for more corrupt UEFA business mm. that's decided that Madrid's going to give them all the money this time around. And not only that, but it's questionable why it's even held there, you know, yeah. uh, politically and all that type of stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. I just feel really sorry for Arsenal and Chelsea fans. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, very rare that I've said that in my entire life, and I, I'm, I'm not even going to say it now, but even though it's true. Um, no, it, it, it's absolutely hush. And the thing is, you have been doing this for a while. Think about it, like uh, the Europa League final a few years ago when Liverpool were in it, it was in Basel. It wasn't a suitable stadium. It was like a 40,000 odd capacity stadium. It wasn't big enough to, ho- to, to, ho- to home it. They, their, their logic is they, they, they take it to a new city and they, they expect locals to fill the stadium out, basically. That's what, they, that's what they're hoping. And it's kind of like what the wrestling does. It's why it's not in, it goes around the country. It's not in the same city week in, week out because people get a bit tired of it. You know, it, it should be like the biggest show on earth to come into town kind of thing. Like, but honestly, like, Baku. I mean, the Europa League is horrendous. It's but a it, terrible competition. Like, it doesn't do itself it any like favours. Th- was it like 2015 when two teams went and they didn't sell out there? Uh, I can't remember the two teams that were involved, and they didn't sell it out, and that's why they've opted to pick for like smaller stadiums and stuff. But this is also at a time when they did have a Champions League final, pl- a Champions on, League place. Hang on, this is, exactly. That's exactly it. You know, so now there is a Champions League up for grabs. People care more about winning the Europa League than they did back then. Mm. Two years ago, they knew that it was going to have a Champions League place up for grabs, and yet they've still decided to put it in a ridiculous stadium. We had it last year in Kiev, you know, and we're seeing the the bounce back of that in Madrid. It's going to be so difficult for Liverpool fans to get tickets to Madrid. Because everyone can get there. Yeah. You know, only the select few actually bothered their arse last season to go down to Kiev without yeah. a ticket. Madrid's going to be full with or without tickets. Yeah, absolutely. Very, 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 very annoying. And once again, it should come as no shock to anyone. But it, isn't it mad how everyone knows that UEFA is just stupid and terrible and there's a, there's a there's an underlying level of corruption to all of it from FIFA and UEFA. And yet, 
it's just like, oh, it's like, oh, it's like having your racist yeah. uncle, isn't it? It's like, going, oh, he's from a different time. Nah, just tell your uncle that he's not allowed to say those words, mate, because, yeah. Um, and it is the acceptance of it that does my head in. But also the fact that, yeah, I was gonna do. I was, I was gonna pick uh, what aboutism or what aboutery as my page this week, like, but I, I, I want to use it in something else a bit later on. But it's this thing of like Liverpool fans were complaining about this last year. They were complaining about it a few, a few years ago in, in Basel, and everyone goes, "Oh, bloody typical Liverpool bleating fans, scouts. bleating on again, typical Liverpool, bleating on." Um, not sometimes. But not always. And now all of a sudden Arsenal fans are there and, and, and Chelsea fans are there and they're going, Oh, hang on a second, this isn't right. And it's like, hello, we've been saying this. It's like, oh, well, maybe they had a point. Yeah, great. Well, what are we gonna do about it? You know, and I, I like seeing like the joint statements coming out from Liverpool and Spurs about the ticket pricing and like the travel costs and all that kind of stuff, like, but UEFA's just a big gang of wankers. So that is a tremendous page, Mr. Chris Page. Yeah. Um yours, mate. Hangovers. Hangovers can get a fuck. Gang of wankers. You hangover, hangover wankers. Fucking hate them. I am we are thirty-six years old. I'm not gonna do the I'm not gonna do the, the gag this week. We're thirty-six years old right now. Um Sunday night we decided to go out with the with the team. Liverpool didn't not the Liverpool team. Um <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I wish. I just um, did a much better, did a much better we wouldn't have probably been end, ended up in Pop World. With we the ended team. up in Pop World. Whose idea was it to go to Pop World? Oh, that was your idea to go to And it was a Pop great World. shout. It was a tremendous shout, by the way. We had an amazing night. I think um, I had to pay for everybody to get in because no one wanted to go with me. That might oh I go oh, yeah, yeah I think you actually yeah, did. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 um and yeah that was a mess so we went to Pop, Pop World and we were out till three in the morning and uh, for some reason I, I moved from bitter to lager to rum and coke when were you drinking bitter Bef- in the pub before and before we left when the wow. five weeks yeah, yeah. Um, and via then, a Haribo shot via a shot of Haribo via many sambuca and. I had an amazing night and it felt great. We had so you don't drink rum and coke? No, it I mean, ultimately, Chris, it doesn't matter. You know, at, at that point of the night, it didn't matter. How could something that makes you feel so good feel so, make you feel so bad? How is that fair? And how is it even more fair to the point where I'm now at a time in my life where I don't do it very often? It's not like I'm ruining my liver on, a, on a, a daily basis. There was a year when I was 21, 22, when I was drunk for 364 on 363 out of 365 days, and I remember them vividly, funnily enough, the days I was <laughs> which sober. Is, which is, <laughs> yeah, one, I was dead ill, and the other, I couldn't sleep because I hadn't had a drink. Um, I was fucked for an entire calendar year. This is not that. I don't go out and drink. All I want to do is go and have a drink with our, with our staff and our friends and go and drown a little bit of our sorrows at Liverpool not winning the league. And what did I do? I did that. I had a great time. I danced my fucking little heart out. And the price... I paid for that was to basically feel like I was dead for 48 hours. 48 fucking hours because I had a few drinks with my friends. Disgraceful hangovers. Disgraceful. That, that That's that nighttime person fucking over the daytime person. I actually watched the episode of Slafford last night. Yeah, night, night Paul ruined the day Paul completely and utterly ruined and, me. And Pop World owned us both. Pop World. I yeah. mean, I made it into work. Did you? You. No, no, no. Um, you lost something, didn't you? Well, right. So I lost my keys, my house keys. So not only did I get absolutely bladdered off my head, and then I had to wake my wife up to get into the house at three o'clock in the morning. Did um, you go for a bit? What? Did you go for a bit? Did you try and uh, while she was up, three o'clock in the morning? Oh God. No. Um, so I um, the invincible but incapable. Um, <laughs> so I um, so I then. Spent yesterday not having any, Monday not having any keys, Tuesday not having any keys, not having any keys. I emailed Pop World yesterday to ask if they turned up, and then as I was leaving the house today, well, no, they didn't turn up in Pop World Why because that? they were in my coat. <laughs> They were in my coat. They were in my big coat. And of course, I didn't need my big coat because it was dead hot on Sunday when I went out to the match. Um, so I've got my keys. All's well that ends well. Um, but I'm never, I can't, I, I'm never, I, I can never drink that much again. I, I, I just, it's not worth it. Can't do it. No, I was. Um, you will. I was in a bad way. I'm planning on doing exactly the same on Saturday. I haven't had a drink yet, though. 
I, I came pretty close after I put the kids to bed last night because they were doing my head in. And I came downstairs and I was like, if I had a cold beer, I would have I would have supped a few, like. But as it stood, I, I couldn't quite face the Pinot Grigio that was in the fridge. Um, I, needed, I needed a cold beer in that, so I'm probably about ready for a beer again today. And I have put some in the fridge for myself. Um, we shall see. I enjoy, I, I, I enjoy a, ca- a casual beer, but that, like... That that's just fucking stupid. I've become good over the over the last over the last decade. I've gotten better at reaching that point where it's a little trigger, and it's like the same. It's it, 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 when I can't drink any more lager, you've drank too much and you just stop drinking and you move on to soft drinks or, or go home. Um, I just totally missed that. I missed that point completely at the weekend and just ploughed ploughed straight through. Um, I'm still fuming a crunchy fried chicken. Actually, I probably should have purged them. Oh, thinking about it because we walked off. Everyone was in a pizza place. I don't know whether I ordered a pizza or not, but I decided I was going. Um, so then we walked off, and then am I right in saying you ran up the road after me? I seem to remember. Yeah. 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 Because. Um, so- you, like our good friend Aubrey Reynolds, are a disappearer. Yeah, oh yeah, I know. I'm You'll just go. Yeah, and I'm totally cool with that. And yeah. I've got a home in Beacon, I can get home-ish. Well, you'll either get home to your house, your mum and dad's house, or your old house. Yeah, I've, I've been known to do that a few times, actually. the house that you've sold and no longer and haven't lived that for. I think the last time Four I years. was there was... I've, I've lived in our house for five years. The last time I ended up at my old house was about three years ago. <laughs> so I'd, I'd moved out at least two years prior, got the cab to the wrong house, then got out, got in another cab, got confused as to where it was and got dropped off by, by, by Belle Vale. And then had to walk home from Belle Vale. Irrelevant, it's okay. not the story that we're telling. <laughs> crunchy fried chicken. Are you caught up with us? And I was like, I'm going to crunchy fried chicken. Uh, so I went in there and I remember vividly looking at that number three thinking, that looks fit as fuck. I am getting that in my belly right now. Yeah. So it looked like some like hot wingy type things with chips. And so, yeah. And I couldn't say it and I couldn't read what it was. So I gave him the number. I was like, two number threes, please. Because I don't think you wanted anything. I think I just ordered you some. And I, yeah, I think I said, oh, just. Yeah, go ahead. Just get two me one. Num- Chris, is, Chris is an expert chicken order. Two number threes, normally. please. And he gives me this thing, and I look at it. I think you're outside the shop at this point. Mm-hmm. And I look up at the picture, and I look back down at the shit that he's handed me. Is this that? And he's like, yeah. I was like, that's red. These are chicken nuggets. <laughs> and he'd basically given us some horrendous chicken nuggets. It, horrendous. They were barely, I don't even know what they were. And it, was like, it was like deep fried chicken bits. It was disgusting. But then you do what you normally chili and mayo you do. And what you normally do, just throw ketchup and mayo on there yeah. so that I can't see it, please, mate. Because yeah. I'm going to be sick if I can see that. Like, And I did eat it all, Like, don't get me wrong. And I think Chris really enjoyed it at the time. Um, um, no, you never, because you left it in the taxi when, did I, I? when I dropped it off. And I had, oh, to, I had to take it and put it in the take it and put what was left in the bin when I got home. <laughs> um, so, yeah, good night was that by all, but hangovers can get a fuck. Um, right, news topics, things that we've seen this week. Have you seen that Mike Dean is a Tranmere Rovers ultra? Mate, I love this. Mm. I saw so many people going on and they didn't like it, and I shouldn't be surprised, but I just thought it was brilliant. Because everyone likes Man the enjoys yeah. himself. Phew. Well, he's a referee, and referees are not supposed to. This is not. This is not like Joey Barton having. I mean, I know you, you had a go this other like having 15,000 cases of gambling on, on, on stuff or whatever. I can understand now there might be a, it might cause a conflict of interest, but they don't allow it. You've got, you've got to like football if you're a referee, surely. Uh, I'm not sure. But... No, but you mean like people who don't like football don't go, don't, don't know and care about football. You either, you either love football, I think, or you, or you, or you fucking absolutely hate it. I don't think there's much in the way of middle ground. So is it a shock that Mike Dean, no. who is a fucking oddball anyway, is it a shock that he should happen to support a football team? No, no. It's a shock that he supported that man. <laughs> yeah. Did anyone, anyone watching or listening? Did you know that my team was a Tramia fan? I had no idea whatsoever. Not only a Tramia fan, you said it yourself. He's a fucking ultra. He was bang up for. I'm amazed he didn't have a flair. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Like, I mean, I, I I loved it. Like, and it's great to see people enjoying themselves. Ultimately, isn't it? And he was fucking enjoying himself. I love the idea of like Mike Dean being like the Millwall. Fan. Imagine like like making cutthroat gestures at the opposition opposition fans and singing. Yeah, yeah, just go, going off his head. Twirling a shirt round his head and, and painting painting 
presumably like fair play. He's gone up in my estimation. Yeah, by, by massively miles. gone up he's, in my estimation. He's still very odd, but he's gone up absolutely miles. Um, so I, 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 I had to show you this one. Um, wrestling fans will have got onto this, but the, the, the WWE was in Liverpool on Sunday night, I believe, um, and they've got this wrestler called Elias and his shtick is that he gets up and he and he sings songs and he, he uses that to wind up the, the locals or whatever. So it's normally about the sports teams being crap or all the women being ugly. You know, classic wrestling 101. Um, so yeah, Elias decided to put a Man City shirt on and sing about Man City winning the league. Oh, okay. Man City It was fucking funny. That is incredible. Do you hear the noise? The, 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 he was singing yesterday, and everyone's singing along. Like the whole arena's pretty much singing yesterday, and then that was that was almost louder than. Well, it was certainly louder than the Etihad was in the Champions League quarterfinals. Last and when year. and when they won the league? Yes, absolutely. Oh my god, did you see the stage? It's pathetic. And his coaching staff, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. They're all coming up. <laughs> there you go. Don't sit on it. I think they pay people to be there, you know. I, now, here's the thing. The, the, the video clips of them celebrating, I've, I've, heard it, I've heard it said that it, that was like very late in the day and it was very late on. So people are not going to be like giving it the absolute biff as if they've been there. If it's like everyone's held the trophy up and it's like the 15th person. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to make a defensive case for it. I don't have to. But I saw some someone extent. on Twitter that said the kids' boss night was more of an atmosphere, and it was mm. like ten times more of an atmosphere than them yeah. winning the league. I'm always, I'm, we- I'm, I'll be honest, I'm wary of a little bit of that because of the fact that I'm sure there'll be videos from that where it was going absolutely mad. But because we've seen things like the how they greet their coach, where it's like a number twenty-one, David Silva. Um, mate. It doesn't. It it doesn't feel like a logical leap to think. No, that's well. How good has it got? I'm not being funny, like, but you could have a chess match with more of an atmosphere than you know. And when the players walk out for a chess match yeah. and players arriving at the Etihad, yeah. you know what I mean. These like are off takes his seat. <laughs> there you go. Four times more claps. There you go. Like. No, no messing around. They're. Um, they're bad. They're they're terrible. Like, but that that uh, Elias thing was absolutely hilarious. Brilliant. I, like, I'm a, I'm a I'm a big wrestling fan. Like, and you know, we were both massive wrestling fans in our in our, in our teenage days. It's just I I, I can't bring. Myself, and that is the thing. There's been loads of these memes and stuff flying around. And I'm look. Liverpool didn't win the league, and I am upset that they didn't because I really thought they were going to, and they were really good. But. When we live in a culture of like the, the, some some banter can be toxic, and there's one point that the Terenders will pick up in a second. I don't mind. I don't mind people taking the piss in a funny way. You saw that there's a there's a only fools Norse's one. That was brilliant. So I think it was something like ninety seven points and still no league, and it's just it's just Sega <laughs> laughing, and it Boise. just Boise, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just friggin' hilarious because yeah. I got sent by a Liverpool fan and he yeah. was like, and it was my cousin and he goes, Chris, I know you take footy dead seriously, but just watch this and I hope that you, I hope that you get it. I hope that he thinks you take footy dead seriously. Probably. It's nice of him, isn't it? Yeah. Well done, mate. It's my entire life, Ed, thanks. Um, and then I got it, I was like, yeah, that's funny. Fair play. That, yeah. That's good content. Because it's, it's not banterous age type content. Yeah. It's just good, wholesome fun. Yeah, it's, uh, that's fine. That's the kind of stuff that is, is fine. Like I, I, But yeah, the thing that's done everyone's I did a video of this over on my over on my channel, but I want your thoughts on it. The the city players on the plane singing the LA song, and obviously the lyrics including company injured Salah. Salah, Liverpool being battered in the streets, we lost in Kiev, Sterling won the double, Scouts was one fuck all. 
It's a fucking joke, quite frankly. Um, mainly because they've changed the lyrics, mm-hmm. first and foremost, uh, and they're now talking about their cap club captain injuring another another player, another professional footballer, whether it's a Liverpool player or not, it just happens to be this time. Mm-hmm. The song, clearly, when Man City have brought this statement out, I haven't read the statement because I think they've said it to reporters. It's gone to the... I saw it through the mirror. So I've seen, I've seen it through the mirror and I've seen it through Sky Sports. I've looked for an official statement and can't find one. And they're saying, well, it doesn't reference this, it doesn't reference that. Right, I've been in arguments on Twitter last night with Man City fans who were saying exactly the same thing. And I'll reference you back to our first podcast that we did together on MXP that said... That we said I didn't mean to offend anybody with the rent boys stuff but as soon as I found out that I did I then apologised and we took that video down yeah. that's how adults react to things that offend people yeah. not to say oh no it's not what we meant yeah, yeah. well listen the, the lyrics are there you, the victim thing is clearly aligned to Hillsborough batted on the streets whether you're saying it's Sean Cox or not fans on Twitter were going it's not Sean Cox it's the ones in Kiev mate Great. fucking brilliant yeah, what yeah. are you fucking doing you're talking about lads getting beaten up going to watch a football game yeah. how far is it from a lad who gets punched in the face to hitting the head on a curb and fucking dying. Yeah. Do you think that's funny then? No? Then shut the fuck up about it being battered in the street. That's absolutely ridiculous. It's your fucking players. Yeah. I thought it was a fake to yeah. begin no, with. No, no, completely. I was I was waiting for this. There's no way that that... Because someone showed me... I, I, I dismissed it yesterday when people showed it to me because, oh, that's bollocks. That's what social media does. There's no way that that can be real. When you actually, do you see the Premier League trophy? In the in the foregrounds of it, like, and, you, and I'm not saying you don't see clear. I think is it David Silver near the front, maybe, maybe or, Gundogan. I thought maybe Gundogan, but you know, I don't. Sterling jumps up when it is, lad. He's down the middle of the aisle. And listen, Sterling's done some great things, and, and I can understand why he'd be more pent up about this. And than there's a line about else. him winning, yeah. winning, the, winning the league, which is fair enough. He's won the double so far already, hasn't yeah. he? You know what I mean? They'll probably change the lyrics to that bit at some point sure. this weekend. But it's just absolutely this because it's not it's not fans, it's players who are role models two fans and two young kids and this is what they think is acceptable behaviour from an adult fuck off yeah. that is not acceptable behaviour if that was my club I'd be absolutely gutted about it yeah. absolutely gutted I, yeah I, I, was, I was saying the same is that it takes nothing from Man City just to go they shouldn't have been singing that regardless of whether the, whether the connotations are with deliberate or not it just it's it, it, and it, it seems to be their whole attitude about every statement at the moment. Instead of going, we're really sorry or whatever, they're going, oh, but but what but what about what about this? Or you know, you know, the idea it's been getting sung all season. Great. Why have you been allowing that? Why? You know, think about it. Think about when um, Man United fans were singing a song about uh, Lukaku. Lukaku, and it came out, and, and they said, look, that can be considered racist. And it was and a lot of people went, oh come on, it's not. It's a but, but, and it was. Okay, well, no. If, if we're saying it's racist, let's just not let's just let's just not sing it anymore. It's see, yeah, maybe they're just so happy that they've got a, the song or they're generating atmosphere. I really, I don't, I don't know. It seems a bit soft, and I can I can justify some part of it in saying like when you get gangs of lads together, they do, they, in particular on football, they do stupid things, and you people get carried away and swept away in the moment or whatever. If they were just singing, like, if they were still singing, like, I think did the line maybe it used to be about Ramos in yeah, Ramos Salah. Ramos Salah. That it, that it, if they've changed it to company, I mean, Blitz. Blitz. And, and you're right, the fans getting hurt. It's just, yeah. It, it's, it's a joke. Yeah. And I'll tell you what else is a joke. Who on that plane's got that shit a phone? <laughs> that, I mean, it, no or, if it's a kit man or anything, he's gone good money. Get a better phone. Like, that, or, the fucking quality on that image is terrible. If that's like Instagram stories or Snapchat or whatever. Get that in flight mode when you're on the plane. You could bring the whole plane down. And let's not have that. Like, you know, it's, um, I, uh, yeah, I, I think I think it's really, as I said, I, maybe I just said it was, all, it was all a bit weird because you think about glory and success and all, I'm not saying Liverpool fans have got it because this is the problem. There's the what aboutism because I've done a video and there's, there's comments already going, you're just bitter and you're just salty and all that. And I go, the mate, you know, I can't, I can't, I can never disprove that to anyone because... 
th- that's there. Like, no amount of me saying I'm not, it's nothing to do with that, will ever, will ever convince people who are desperate to believe that, that, that it is, of course. But it is this what aboutism. I'm seeing all people go, well, what about Liverpool fan pushing someone into a, a fountain in Barcelona? Yeah, he was a cunt as well. I mean, he was a massive dickhead and he deserved to be banned from footy for life. We all want that lad to never be able to allow to watch a Liverpool game again because he's a massive dickhead. So, you know, you know, there's so many of these instances. These are these are mutually exclusive events and they deserve to be treated as such. Because one set of fans did something bad doesn't excuse another set of fans. You know, two wrongs don't make a right in any it's way, not, shape, or form. It's not frigging dominoes. Yeah. At some point, someone's got to grow up and stop doing this shit. Yeah. It's that simple, yeah, isn't and, it? And again, I can agree with mistakes. Don't mind. People make mistakes. People make mistakes all the time. We're all human. I've, I'm fine with people making mistakes, provided they're prepared to admit the wrong and and, ed- and educate themselves in the future. That's how we grow as a species. That's it's Darwinism, basically, at, a, at, a, at an intellectual level, certainly. And um, that's the thing that, that goes me on it is like the whole basically Man City going. No, there's it's there's no there's no foundation to the idea that it's based on Sean Cox or or, or Hillsborough. <sighs> Fine, but but can it's it's about an, it's about a having a level of empathy and a level of understanding to say that if how put, could this be construed from the other side? Yeah. And you know what else? It's bloody irrelevant this season. Yeah. It was about last season. So why are you singing it when you've just won a league title? Just cha- you've changed the word. I mean, first, I mean, look, they've changed some of the words, albeit they've actually made them worse by doing the company on, on Salah stuff. They've proven they can change the lyrics. Do what everyone else is doing. Is got do what we did. At least not a Liverpool song. We didn't invent that song. We got it from Porto and Barcelona. Have got a version, and all loads of teams in Europe have got versions and all that. Now, just change the lyrics. Change them about the good things that you've done this season. I've got no problem with Sterling's won the won the, the league of the double or whatever. Scouts has won fuck all. No problem with that. That's banter. I hate it, but you know that's fine. That's 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 it's good. Not cancerous, is it? No, exactly. That's good. That's fine. A fine level of football banter. Just change a few more words and sing about something good. You know, like. Silver scored. Silver scored against United. M- reference these things. Reference the thing. Company, company smack one in. You know, from from twenty five yards against Leicester. These are really good things that Man City have done. They've got some really good things to cl- to talk. We won the league with hundred points. We won it with ninety eight. Ale ale ale. You know what I mean? Jesus Christ! Have a bit of intelligence. It. it yeah. We've won our sixth title. That's as many as Sunderland. That would fit. Yeah, absolutely. As many as Sunderland. Ale ale ale. You know. It, <laughs> It writes itself, guys. Jesus Christ. Um, two two scally lads from Liverpool wrote the football chant of the year last year when they were on the ale in Porto. You've had an entire year to think of something better than singing about Liverpool not winning a European Cup. That you weren't in. That, you... <laughs> that we knocked you out of. <laughs> it's like them singing about Oh, it's like they were the Chelsea fans singing about Steven Gerrard slipping. Like I know that was in a game that they played in, but it was... It was about us losing the title to man to man to, uh, baffling football. And fans the other are thing that's, co- that's come out on the back of this, it's I, I know we talked about football Twitter and stuff last week, and, and we've done the page section and stuff. But them like them accounts that are now getting set up that look by the at like a Liverpool fan, yeah. and they're not Liverpool fans. And I'm sure there's ones from Man City fans that aren't Man City fans. What is that about? Genuinely, people are just like, like weirdos, mate. I, I'll honestly. tell you what, I'll do. I'll just do this, and then someone finds it and they're like, Oh, look what this Liverpool fan said. Oh, hang on, he's got no followers. How have you found that tweet? He's put one tweet out, it's not got a like. You mean you set that account up and now you're promoting it? Like, uh, why? Why are you doing this? Because what is the end game here? Do you just want more people to hate Liverpool fans, or do you want more people to hate fans of this well, club? Because what's it, it matter even if you do? People do it for all. People do it for all the football clubs. And you know, and you know, the only thing I can justify it is, is it's like when we were teenagers. When you're teenagers or, or young teens, you you do stuff to try as as young men certainly. You try to do things that leave a mark on the world around you. You try to get a reaction for, for things. Piss you can, on a fucking tree, lad. No, honestly, I know, but that's when you used to carve. So you'd carve your initials into a tree oh my god I feel like I'm, in a, I'm not from an Ian Blyton novel or anything by the way but you know what I mean is you always did something I don't know I don't know why it is like a, it's a genetic thing it's like a, a caveman thing or whatever but it's like you know graffiti on walls or you know we, you do you just do daft stuff like you leave something to when you come back the next day you can say like I did that I did something to impact this world and I think people need that they, they do it they just do, I think they can all I can only imagine people do it for the gratification to say 
you can show your mates. It's why people go on Twitch streams and, and, and troll because you can then show your mates that clip of when you made a Twitch streamer react to something you said. That's just it's just something tangible you can say. I did it, and it's a bit sad and it's a bit weird, like, but you know, you're right. It's 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 fucking social media aids that it's absolutely fine. I, I, I genuinely, and maybe it's because I'm older, I just don't get it. Mm. I just I just don't see the need in doing it. Like, and you know, even last night I put, I put a tweet out and stuff and I probably, I typed it once and I thought, you know, I'm not quite happy with the word and that, I'll change it. And I changed it and I thought to me, and I got people, loads of people replying like, you're a fucking dickhead and all this type of stuff. I was like, why are you calling me a dickhead? I've not said anything. I've not called anyone anything in this tweet. I've worded it in such a way that I've put my opinions across without saying anyone's a cunt. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yet you're coming back at me like I am. Yeah. And it's stuff like, stop defending people who you don't know the, what, the, the ins and outs of the story. And I think that, you know, this what aboutism that you've spoken about before, that, that does happen, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's not just non-Liverpool fans, this happened with Liverpool fans and stuff over the last mm. few years and there is that sort of tribal mentality where you're just going to get, you're going to get your back up about it and you, maybe you do want to support your players but take a step back, look at it read the words, know what you're singing and understand why people are pissed off about it Yeah, that's it, look, you know, again we, we hopefully hopefully we don't have this situation but if, if, that, if a video came out that Liverpool fans were doing that I would like to think that I would be I would stand up. Again. I would be pissed off, and I would be fucking annoyed with it. And, and, and you know, because and here's the thing: we we live in this world. Is that that could happen? And and again, mutually exclusive events. We can come out and we can come out in condemnation of that in the future. Me condemning this now doesn't mean I am. Or I, I, I you know we can't have different feelings or feelings about things in the future. Again, the the internet's a very fucking a very fucking odd place. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and give us your ad revenue. Um, Let's talk Game of Thrones, Chris. Oh, yes. We'll put time codes in in the description underneath, um, and people will do it in the in the comments because they're really good. We've got a wonderful audience. Um, you can skip ahead past this stuff if you really want to. And we're going to get onto some discussion stuff, but um, I did. I hadn't seen this episode, and all I saw fair before I saw it, and I've seen it now, was the fallout, and I saw loads of people kicking off about it. Having seen it, I imagine. That this episode is to fans of Daenerys what uh, The Last Jedi is to fans of Luke Skywalker. Yeah. And here's the thing. What I've come to expect from George R. 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 Martin is expect the unexpected first and foremost. And what, what happens... And tons of misogyny. Uh, loads. Uh, but what happens is you think you know how it's going to go down and you play that out in your head and therefore you're disappointed when it doesn't happen your way. I get that. I have these opinions and I have these ideas of how it's going to go, but it doesn't disappoint me when, it, when I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. It actually, with him, and maybe, I don't know why, but maybe it's just him... When when something happens that shocks me, I'm like, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Because I didn't see that one coming, and that's a bit of a thrill for me. So I absolutely love the episode. Mm -hmm. I get that from a character arc point of view, it's not really great. We've spent seven seasons building her up to be something that she's ultimately turned out not to be. But that's also a big fuck you to everyone, and I think that's kind of funny. Like, yeah, I I I, I really enjoyed the episode. I I because I, I wasn't quite sure. I've read I've read some more more than depth reactions from people after after the fact of it. I just enjoyed it as an episode. I thought it was fine. My issue with it, I think that the character arc thing is is, is spot on from a creative perspective. They, 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 they've rushed this whole series, and and that's because they're going to do Star Wars. Yeah, I know exactly. But the, but the point is, is that you literally had a scene where they said, and they, they kind of alluded to, like, here's the, she's going to have the choice last episode where she's either going to have to slaughter everyone or she's going to have to find a, find another another solution. And then they have a conversation at the start of the episode where they say, Targaryens are basically a flip of the coin. They're either good or bad. And that was what then set her off to be... To, to be that was the only effective major point that was literally only in there to help justify her, her, her absolutely losing her shit. And I know you can cut to, but all of this stuff, this turn has happened in too small a space of time, really. It's not been, it's not quite been spread ha, out Has enough. it though? Because let's think, let's think back, because we, we talk about her story arc and all that type of stuff. Maybe it's just one too, one too many things have happened to her. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest, she was burned alive. Mm. Um, she lost her husband. She's been raped. Yeah. Um, she's lost two of her kids yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, the person that she's fall in love with now doesn't want to fucking have sex with her anymore because he, he's, he's a, a, a nephew. nephew 
Um, so there are all these things. And at oh, some, you know what? And at some point, slaughter everyone. Exactly. If all that happens, you know like, what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. well, hang on. You say that, but actually, at some point, there is a tipping point. It's fallen, and she reached it. It's fallen when foul. she killed Varys. She reached their tipping yeah. point. It's fallen far at the, at the, at the heavy hand of the stuff. I think of this series where like, we were talking about it last week about like someone mentioned in the comments like the, it's 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 Game of Thrones with fast travel activated like it's the, the, because they're trying to they're trying to condense too much into too short a space of time in this series. There's, there was no need to rush all this, and it, uh, this could have been they could have sown these seeds a little bit more and a little bit heavier earlier on, just so it didn't feel as shocking. But I can understand because I get it from the Luke Skywalker perspective. You have built this character up. Daenerys is is a, is a cultural icon for women, a positive a positive female role model. And I and I know there's a lot of people who are, are upset. I, I don't get me wrong from 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 a, from a, a, a pure selfish perspective. I've watched like male icons in films be kind of pushed to one side over 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 recent years, you Luke Skywalkers, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I've been thrilled to see a generation of strong female leads and stuff, but there's nothing wrong by by that there's not what's wrong with having a strong female you know um antagonist? What's yeah. what what's wrong with that by the by the same notion? Because you know Sorry, we, we, because it, it, I, I, I love Wonder Woman brilliant, and these are all, again, these are all not necessarily linked or, or whatever, but we're seeing this resurgence or a, a, genuine first, a, a, a genuine first renaissance almost, where you've got Rey in, in Star Wars, you've got Wonder Woman, you've even got it in um, Cruz Ramirez in Disney Cars, you know, you've got all these really strong female characters coming to the forefront, absolutely brilliant, but is that because of that, it doesn't mean that every every basic character has to follow down the, the same path. I, I, I agree. I think Basically, e- everyone who's pissed off named the kids Danny or Daenerys. Because I think it was in like the top 100 <laughs> names in the world like, over the last couple of years. Yeah. And and now they're there going, what the fuck yeah. have I done naming an after there? Game of Thrones uh, fandom has become like football fandom. It's like all those people who named the kids Fernando. Uh, and then Fernando Torres left Liverpool and they had to deal with the aftermath of like, oh my God, he plays for Chelsea. I've got a kid called Fernando. What have I done? What, oh no, it's after the uh, ABBA song. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, like I say, I can un- I can totally understand it. I can totally relate. I don't care one way or the other. And to be fair, I really like Jon Snow as a, as a character. I'm a, I, there was a great opportunity, and this is you, what you're saying is right, is that we've all written, this is the problem with films and TV and movies. We watch all these theory shows and we all discuss it and we all think and we, we write better endings ourselves when we don't or at least we them. think we do yeah. when, we, when we don't have them we become dis- disappointed with them sometimes it's just bad TV and, and bad movies that wasn't fair. bad TV no that I, wasn't bad TV I mean what I don't know how much Cersei gets paid an episode, but fuck me, she's just dra- drank a glass of wine looking out a window for the entire season. <laughs> it's been ridiculous. Um, but her cl- her best scene was tiptoeing past the fucking Cleganes. Yeah. She was just like, "No, see you later. Bye. Thanks very much. Just, you're just gonna, I'll just, just gonna leave you here. Just gonna, you go on, carry, carry on, on, carry on, kill anywhere. each other, please. My word. So what happened when we were watching that? Me and Kat were watching it in bed and stuff, and the the. Did you have a go? No, I wasn't in the right mood to be honest with you. <laughs> Maybe if I'd not seen the White Horse. Anyway, um, so what happened was they were having their big fight. He stabs him through the eye, doesn't he? Yeah. And then he gets pinched in the eyes or vice versa. And then they obviously th- he th- th- throws him out the thing and they obviously burn and hopefully die. Then our stream cut back five minutes and ca- and it came to the mountain again and she was like, no, he's not awake again. <laughs> no, it's just skip back five minutes, love. And she's like, oh, I thought he survived. Oh my God, amazing. Absolutely then, incredible. What's not satisfying about the episode is Cersei's death. Yeah. If that in- is indeed what happened. And yeah. I think it is. But really, I really, I really was a little bit disappointed with that. I just wanted it to be a bit more gruesome. But what they've, yeah, I I think what that, that's one thing that's worth considering though, is like, what it, what it effectively did was, you look at the despicable actions that she's taken, it's kind of like saying she, she, it's saying she wasn't necessarily, she was semi-redeemed in some respects in that she wasn't a total monster. She always had, 
she always did it for it. She, she always did it for whether it was for, like the, she, for the kids. Like she had a, a, her mother's instinct or whatever that was behind a lot. A lot of what it does. You can't which go around really, killing people because you've got a baby in your tummy. No, I know, I know. Which I don't hundred percent agree with. But I, I, I don't know whether that was a that was a simple. I thought you're right. I thought there was a little bit a little bit more that could have done with that. But it's all fell far of the same thing. It's like it's literally like we've got this amount of characters to kill off and this amount of screen time. They knocked six off, didn't yeah, they? In that just, episode, it was crazy. Just flicking them off like left, right, left, and right. The, and the, 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 the Cersei's hand. And, uh, is it Kai, Kai yeah, something whatever, or Kai yeah. or something like that? He, his death was just I don't know. Death, yeah, literally, like dead. <laughs> dead, smash dead, brilliant. Yeah. That was brilliant. Can we just replay that, please? Yeah. Because um, I'd like to see that one again. Mm. I'd really love to see that one again. And yeah. there were so many great things that happened in that episode. Are you Stark running through? Follow me. I'll save you. Dead. 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 Brilliant. Dead. Um, Okay, so everybody's dead around there. Brilliant. I, I thought it did. It, it got that whole what what it's done in recent episodes, and it was it kind of redeemed the the, the Winterfell stuff of being too dark, as it it really gave that that like vision into the horrors of what they're all in 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 the midst of, and you see like you see Jon Snow going through, it and you see I like struggling just to just to get out, and that's because it it, tell, it tells you the, how horrific what's going on around you is and the the, the, the the problem the hero story isn't really a hero story anymore you, you don't get to save everyone and these aren't superheroes these are you know for a, for a TV show these are real people dealing with this horrendous horrendous situation that going on around them so I thought it was a really good episode it wasn't what I it wasn't what I expected um I did and I do honestly feel as though for the for how good the character Daenerys is, and we've still got a couple of episodes. And I'm sure there'll be something. One more, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, but I'm sure there'll be something mega that happens, you know. And whether if she if she has to be the ultimate ultimate evil, there has to be something really amazing that happens with that. It's got to be John and Arya versus her. Yeah, sure. Maybe maybe it's that. Yeah, I guess that makes that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And but he, so there's still time, and there's no sense in everyone getting totally losing losing the Also, what was it, the point in the goal company? No, they got obliterated in about three seconds. Yeah, it was all. That's what I mean. This, 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 they should have just had double the episodes and took the time over it and really like allow people to to live in it a bit more. I do feel it's all a bit. It's all been a bit rushed, but um, totally enjoyable. It's just a shame because there was a chance there for Jon Snow to continue to be Jon Snow. So he gets to be, he gets to be who he's always wanted to be. She gets to be who she always wanted to be, and I still, I still feel like we're going to come to that mega Britain. It's gonna. People are gonna be dissatisfied, and what you'll have, what what we're gonna have when we do this, whatever we get the chance to review, because I don't think I'm actually here next week. But we um, <laughs> we're gonna have people who go, that was shit, and then you're gonna have people like the the Emperor's New Clothes taking up the baton and defending it simply because they're huge Game of Thrones fans and defending no matter what Ted ending we end up with, defending it like it's the greatest so piece I, of I television ever. I heard an, an interesting story that um, George R. R. Martin's actually finished the next two books. Quite, it's not true, he's debunked Aww, that since. Ah, yeah. come on, George, you useless fuckwit. Yeah, it's not true. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> anyway, there you go, that's Game of Thrones. Prepare to be disappointed. Um... <laughs> Want to talk about some? some See, at stuff. least finish this, the one of them. I don't know. I've never read the books. Don't care. This will be me done with Game of Thrones after next week, so it's fine. No, I read the last book on my honeymoon in 2012. Yeah. That's so. It's been eight or nine years since he's written the last one. Like lazy, 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 useless. Mm. Yeah. Um. No, I just list the characters, kill them all in different ways. End book. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's how you do it. Yeah, just a list. That's how you do a Game of Thrones just travel. A shop, just a shopping list <laughs> of it. It's just like such and such impaled through head. Yeah, sad. Had head smashed on rock. And then, yeah, and then probably a picture of them as well. So now we know who it is compared to the name because now they've got faces for all these characters. That'd be, that'd be very, very useful indeed. Um, right, we're going to have a, a bit of a, a chat. You know, we've made a bit of a... I think in recent weeks of talking about each other's and our and our lives and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you've enjoyed those kind of chats, and and, and I think we'll probably start we'll, we'll start to change things up in, in in the coming weeks or what have you. But once told you there's something you 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 asked me if you could talk about this week. Yeah. Um, and it was ticks. Yeah. So um, I've never talked about this on a video. Um, and I felt like I wanted to, and part of the reason that I felt like I wanted to is because of the community that we're starting to build around mm -hmm. around this show and stuff and around this channel. And I feel like maybe it's something that I've wanted to say in public for absolutely ages, but I've never been able to. Mm -hmm. So those close to me know that I have ticks. Mm -hmm. 
you know about it, of course. You 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 bring them up from time to time when you see me doing them. My wife obviously knows about it. My family obviously know about it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And a few of my uh, cl- closest mates, uh, I would say, know about them. But other than that, probably, you know, the people behind the cameras probably notice yeah. um, more than anything. Um, so, yeah, it's just something, you know, it's, I've, I've had these and it's like... I suppose it's a bit like well, it is. It's Tourette in some form, and whether it's mild or what, I don't know. Uh, I went to uh, a neurological hospital when I was probably I don't know, maybe eighteen, nineteen, twenty, mm-hmm. something like that. Like, uh, and they saw me and said that that's what it was because I've had lots of motor tics. Mm-hmm. Um, so, just to clarify for people who aren't, aren't aware, what it is it's not like because tics could be like the uh, tics are not the little creatures that bur- bur- no. Away so, into his, into I'm, not, I'm not. I don't. I can't blame my swearing on Tourette's. Let's just put it that way, because um, that's just me. Um, I don't have vocal ones like that. I've had the occasional one where it's like a, a clearing of the throat cough mm-hmm. uh, over the years and stuff, which I know a lot of people get. Um, mine are more like physical tics, like motor ones, where you just maybe you move an arm or you move a part of your face or something like that. So um, the the earliest I can sort of date it back to is my Holy Communion, believe it or not. Uh, so the photographs of my, me on my Holy Communion, obviously there was no glasses back then, and it's me doing this all the time. And so everybody that was, so me, uh, me, me mates at the time, Shuey and Craig were all getting our Holy Communion at the same time, and all of our families were all best mates were there. And they were, like, the families were like, what, what's Chris doing? And my mum didn't have a clue what was going mm-hmm. on, and I was just doing this thing with my face. And that I had that for probably maybe three or four years. Mm-hmm. I would do it all the time, like, and... I've had so many over the years, and it's so weird. So if you've got them, let us know how you deal with them. Mine went covert. Yeah, well, because it 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 did because you've it stems back to the conversation we had ages ago about how like personality types and how you you uh, you do things, you know, off the off the cuff kind of fell. And I and I, I, I think it's fascinating because I think so much of it links in. It's all it's all part and parcel of the same. Of course, comes from the same brain, doesn't it? Ultimately, and what I think is really interesting about it is that I don't know if you saw this. Um, the actress Salma Blair, who was in yeah, yeah, yeah. Cruel, Cruel Intentions, Intentions. Has, has has basically done a video, an interview in the last week or so. Where she's got MS, oh, and she's come cool. out and, and and done this interview, and she's having she has like uh, vocal spasms and all that kind of stuff, and she can't walk properly, and she's oh, wow. finally getting treatments with it. But she came out because she's saying like she's it's not affecting her, not affecting her mind, but people don't talk about don't talk about these things. And I, it, it that that's, I think what you're saying is right is that we, we, the way we do this podcast we try to be as open and, and honest on, on things that affect us in time and it's you know I, I, for me I remember when it, it really kind of hit it was became noticeable really noticeable about six six years ago six seven years ago I think now maybe a little bit a little bit more recently than that and it was I remember thinking it a lot of it was like stress induced and, and stuff and it because it became whether it was whether it's you say the covert stuff in having to in having to stop it like the Tourette stuff in having to sh- try and stop yourself doing it it almost exacerbates it in, yeah in it, it doesn't it's hard to describe I read an article recently I sent it to you didn't I um, last week or something and I can't you can't describe like here, I suppose can you describe an itch yeah like how that makes you feel inside before you scratch it it's hard to describe what that is yeah. that you that you're scratching it's for. Like, do you know yeah, what I mean? It's like a, like a compulsion almost. That something exactly, needs yeah. to be done. Something needs to be done. So for me, I've had loads of them. I've got one at the moment where I kind of move my shoulder a little bit, and it, to the point where it actually hurts, yeah. but I still do it, yeah. and I don't know why. It's like. I can feel something there and I know that if I'm going to do something like that, it will get rid of it for a little bit and yeah. then it may change for something else. I had this one where I was like blowing my wrists all the time. You remember that one, don't you? Like, And so it's all, it is, I think it is all stress related for me. Sometimes I go through really bad periods where I might have one particular one for a year, two years, something like that. I, I, I th- I've got a few at the moment, but they're all like under the table with me feet type of things and all mm. that type of stuff like a toe drag here and there as you're walking along or something like that so it's really strange and especially when the camera's pointed on you all the time and that's the that's the thing that's probably hardest for me over the last few years is that I always know that they're look, like they're looking and somebody's going to notice something and now I'm at the point like where fuck it I don't care anymore yeah. you know what well, I mean it, it's, it's funny because again the stigma's come around things I remember when we had um, Deep Mara Manning 
in, 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 in my house years ago and he had a really bad really bad ticks at the time like you know doing the blinking yeah. one and um you can't it's we it's it's you can't talk it's hard to talk about to people about these things like we're men we're bad enough we were literally sitting in the studio and someone can have two buttons undone on the shirt and the belly be hanging out and we feel too embarrassed to tell someone so we'll we'll sit what have a film an entire thing and then and then and then let them get slaughtered off the back of it or whatever because we feel very uncomfortable pointing out you know other things like you know so it, it becomes out and I spent hours hours and hours and hours trying my best to cut around his things and I, you know again I've never never spoken to him about it or what have you but stuff is it because there is a degree particularly with the, in the world we're in where you can't you just can't help it there's people who, who are just knobheads who who look at things and they point and they, they live to point out things they live to just go be mean on things and what have you so it's I I, I understand completely we joked about like the having bad the bad haircuts thing it's I, you know if I, I I have that with I Tell you what, I used to never used to iron a shirt, and I'd be, I I shower. You know, I wouldn't say I showered every day. I don't, you know, all, all this kind of stuff, and it never used to bother me. Now it all does because people say stop me if I go out. Odds are someone will say hello and, or, or want a photograph or whatever, and I feel like I wouldn't like it puts me on edge. That I might might go out and me fucking you know what I mean like I fucking stink or me fucking it is all over the place because it only takes one person to go the absolute state or or whatever and that's the thing that you can't shift like it's so I yeah, yeah they, they it's, just, it's mad isn't it and that's it like and people do know who we are now and people care probably more that if you if you do something stupid or you do something silly or something like that and I think you've got to get to a point and especially with. You know, the way that we're talking about mental health a lot at the moment, mm -hmm. and I think it's so good what so many people around, not only our community and our industry and stuff are doing, but just society on, on the whole is now much more accepting of mental health. Yeah. Uh, and it being an actual illness and understanding it from an illness perspective and stuff. And I think sometimes it's just better to just talk about these things and yeah. just let them out there yeah. and let, then let, then see what comes of it. Like. Yeah, and, and as you said, I think if, if anyone else suffers from those things, feel free, let, let us know in the, in the comments on stuff. I'll tell you how to hide them, I'm dead good at it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, you know, the point is, is that I think there's a, particularly because of the way the social media is people put put forward a false version of themselves. People put forward the best. Instagram, we, we Instagram's do, the worst. Instagram, for that. Facebook. You know, like I, it's funny. People always say about like the kids. Your kids are so gorgeous, and you put all oh, these gorgeous, look at the gorgeous photos. You don't see the ones where they're like, you know what I mean. And I don't put. We don't put. We don't put crap photos of ourselves we do periodically we've got far too many uh, uh, you know out there already but you tend not to because and because of that people have this this weird pressure and it's it's really subvert that makes them feel like they're not good enough or what they do is not not right or that someone else is living this perfect life. someone else's house is the tidiest it can be and someone else's kids are better behaved and someone else's hair is better and someone else is prettier and someone else has got less blemishes and someone else has got doesn't suffer from stress and anxiety and all that like we all do to different levels it's true and I remember talking to my wife about it and Kat and we were having a conversation about it we saw someone on Facebook who, who will remain, remain nameless uh, and you know single parents Looks like from the outside doing a great job. I don't know whether that's the case. Looked like from the outside, and I, we had a conversation like, right? "Why are they making it look so easy? Mm -hmm. Like we're massively struggling here." And this is probably when we only had one child, and mm -hmm. we're like, not getting any sleep, and we're trying to do our best for them. And it's like everyone's trying to do the best, and it's what you were saying. Then it's like you don't put photos out of the hard times, no. and perhaps we should because it yeah. maybe make society feel a little bit better if we did. Yeah. If we just opened up to our feelings and said, "This is just us." Like me or love me or hate me, do whatever you want. But this is me and I'm trying my best. Yeah. And you know what? As a parent, I'm trying my absolute best for my two girls. And if that's not good enough, it's not good enough. But at least I know I've tried my best. And, you know, there are people out there who, who, who are going through shit times who, who maybe, you know, I can look further down and look at one of the comments that will come to you later who may be going through hard times just know mate that if you got if you are trying your absolute best things will hopefully work out for yeah, you yeah that's it you know all, all you can ever do is, is, is try try to be it's a bit of a it's a bit of an instagram line but try to be your best self you know what i mean and that's but understand that you set even if you benchmark yourself off yourself 
that's a very difficult thing to do. And that yeah. mental health and is a big thing for that. I've discovered actually in, in because I've struggled with stuff in the last few in the last few years, and my wife's had major struggles with it. Um, in fact, we'll go to the we'll just jump to the life coaching stuff because I think it's it's, it's relevant. Um, Matt Hobson said, "Hey guys, adore and what you're doing on MXP. Question for you both as agony uncles. I suffer with my mental health. So, what advice would you give to help people struggling with their mental health? Thanks again, guys. Um, the biggest lesson I've learned because I've been on courses recently uh, about for anxiety and depression and all that kind of stuff." Is that if you if you are because some people we all have anxieties about something it's a natural response to thing it's the it's a response that says if you stand in the middle of the road you will feel uncomfortable because your danger sense is going off it, it's it's what gets you out of the road and stops you getting run over some people have you know and it's a chemical imbalance in the brain in some regards which means that they 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 can't get them they don't release the chemicals that lifts them back up again and they find them hard to get out of these mental loops and what have you and what I've discovered is. It, particularly if you if you chronically suffer with these things, you 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 you're your own worst enemy, your own worst critic. But you benchmark your best times. You benchmark yourself against when you're at your absolute best. So you might have a week where you feel amazing, and instead of going, look how amazing, look look, I can drag myself out of it. That's a great thing. You beat yourself up for not being at this level every single day. And you know what? No one is ever at this level every single day. There are just people who are better at portraying that. And people are maybe maybe just who are at that more times in their lives. And people are a bit more lazy fair People are easier, easier letting things go. But nobody is perfect all of the time. People go through shit times. And the worst thing about it is, is that when we don't talk about it and yeah. we don't converse with people about these things we are led to believe that we're the only ones and that's a more dangerous hole to be in than, than a, a hole when you realise you're in it with other, with other people so yeah for, for me Matt you know perfect. I think it's perfectly put by Paul but just to expand on his final point you've, you, you will have people who love you you will have people in your life who you love open up speak to them, mm -hmm. get support. You don't have to go through this shit on your own. Yeah. I think that's ultimately what I think people need to realise, you know. I can only talk from my own experiences and maybe relationships that haven't worked out because we haven't talked. Yeah. You know, and, and ultimately, you know, it, it gets difficult sometimes, you know, at the moment we've got two kids, run a business, all that type of stuff, and you have to carve time out, not only for yourself, but you have to carve time out for your partner yeah. and, and, and anybody in your life and just make sure that you've got that time where you can just connect with somebody. Put the fucking phone away, man. Yeah. Put the phone away because likes on Facebook don't 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 make you feel better. Yeah. They are doing exactly what Paul's saying. They're benchmarking you at your best. I only got 150 likes in this and not 300. That therefore you're gonna feel worse mm. than when you got 300 likes. Put the fucking phone away and let's reconnect with people on no. a fucking personal and social level. 100% agree with that. Mobile phones and it, it's mad because we we our generation. About a couple of years in around us, we exist. We were born in the crossover generation between the, the tail end of our our parents' way of living and this and the millennial way of living. So like we've all we we got we've had mobile phones all our adult lives. Analog childhood, digital adulthood. Exactly. You know. We so we 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 were like fifteen, sixteen when I, we got our first our own mobile phones. So we've had that. We've grown up with that, but we remember not having them. And we remember not having the internet, but we've always had, we've equally always had the internet. And but what you've got now is a generation of people who, again, you get you getting self fulfillment, or you've or you're looking for you're looking for love. Dopamine in the wrong hits yeah. is what you're getting yeah. from these apps. I mean, you know, so the, the Facebook app, right? You know, where you can pull down to refresh. Mm -hmm. You don't need to do that anymore. So they designed that originally, these guys up in California, I think it was, or whatever it is, and you pull it down and you refresh your feed. You, you haven't needed to do that for a long, long time on Facebook. But why they've left it in there, it's like spinning a, in a spinning a fucking... Roulette wheel. Like roulette wheel, wheel. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah. You know, I can't one remember. Bandit, the, a one-arm yeah. bandit. Is that you're getting a hit, what's coming up next? And they've left it in there because people are actually getting addicted to these <laughs> fucking things. <laughs> And it's crazy how many that this times, is allowed to go on. How many times have you sat there and it's it, it, you've been in bed for a spell of time and you've got your phone there and you've maybe done one last round of all your apps just to check what's going on. Check And then instead of putting it down, you'll go back to the first app again. So for me, I go like every time I wake up in the morning before I go to bed, I'll check Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, maybe Twitch, whatever, all the all the things that we, we you know we do, and it, it, it does it, for me it's predominantly work related. But when you get to Facebook and Twitter, it can be a bit more you know, personal stuff. And then I'll go back to and then I'll go back to Facebook again and see if something interesting has happened. Then I'll go back to if nothing, I'll go back to Twitter again. And when you realise when you're refreshing it and you're getting two more tweets, it's when you need to put it to put it down. And I've said for years, mobile phones 
are just devices now that we all carry around that allow us to have our days ruined at any moment in our lives. We never had that. When I was 14, I simply never had that because you just didn't, you didn't have a phone yet. People had to contact you on your home phone, which meant it filtered well, out knock people. on your door, God forbid. Well, you had, but your parents were, your, were the gatekeepers with conversation. So if you wanted, you had to have the bottle. If you wanted to speak to someone, you had to risk speaking to another person in order to speak to that. So you, it was terrifying when you first started bringing girls up and all that kind of stuff, like horrible, 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 or, or, or your friends. You had to do with all this thing. Now, I mean, I had to have this with my wife because we had this, we had it. A few issues with, with you know a, a year ago, and and one of the things that was was promoted was she she realized she if she needed to call me when I was in work because I can pick my phone up at any time, she could get me at any time with any problem. Whereas I can't do it in reverse because she's a teacher, so I would wait until she was she was finished and she could and she could basically throw up and go this is disastrous or this is fucked and it would throw my day into absolute disarray because I wasn't prepared or because I've answered, you feel like because you've answered, you've got the time to deal with mm. something. There's a the delineation between what's a, can you pick some milk up on the way home? And someone has absolutely wrecked my day. I need you to counsel me for, for half an hour. There's, you never know what that's going to be. So there becomes an anxiety yeah, with, when, the, when the phone absolutely. rings. Yeah, you do. I think everybody gets it. I mean, I, you know, I get it when, so a, a notification happens. I hate, I hate them, and you know this very well, don't you? You know, I look at, I, I set up all these digital well-being um, apps on my phone, and I started looking at how many times I'm opening my phone a day, and it's like. I was getting 390 fucking notifications a day. No wonder I can't concentrate on anything. No wonder I actually can't give my all to what I'm trying to do. I never achieve anything because yeah. I'm one of those people who... I, I like to work like this needs doing, this needs doing, this needs doing, but I'm also one of these people who doesn't want to let people down. Yeah. So when something happens, I'll do that, and then I'll go back and I'll spend five minutes trying to work out where I'm up to. And then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm spinning too many plates, I'm stressed as fuck, and my fucking heart's pounding like that because my phone's fucking keeps going. Yeah. And it's madness. And, and I think what's random for me is, you know, I got this smartwatch a little while ago. That's helped me, mm -hmm. which is weird because you think, actually... It would be the other way around, but now I can put my phone to one side when I walk in the door, and I'm not picking my phone up and looking at a notification. Going, I don't need to deal with that, but I'll just check Twitter and I'll just check Facebook and I'll just check Instagram. Whereas now I go, don't need to deal with that, yeah. and I'll look at it and I'll move on, or I'll go, need to deal with that, and I'll pick it up for work, yeah. put it back down again. That's and that, I tell you what, fucking life, honestly, life altering for me. Yeah, I am, um, which is mad because it shouldn't be. Yeah, no, I'm, I must admit, I, I still struggle with it. You know, that thing of. When, when to switch off because it's so hard because every comment you reply to and every tweet you reply to and every every time you share your content it gets bigger and, it, and, it, and it, it drives on and it never it never stops because there's always people doing it and I said not me complaining about the, the world I live in I absolutely adore it but it's very difficult there is no there, I don't have an off switch I find it very very difficult it's to, draining to, exactly and, and I, I what I've done the last couple of days off the back of the league stuff I've gone right you know I've got a few more days away I'm going away with me going away with my wife on, on Aldi for a few days and then away with the kids after that I just said I, I've, I've started leaving my phone in the bedroom I was leaving it on the, leaving it somewhere on the side and that's and that and trying to go because you've set you set it up for yourself like because you're always available and you oh, well people will be pissed off because I'm pissed off when people don't answer when you ring someone you're like your phone's always on you why don't you answer the phone you know we should start to accept that you know if we yeah, want to really want to contact people then we schedule then we can schedule in we, I, I always say like I'll respond to I'll respond to phone calls generally speaking first but I will swear phone calls if if I'm if I'm in if I'm in something more often than not like I hate answer phone messages and I've always wanted to send that record me voicemail as saying don't Please leave don't. a voicemail because I'll never ever I never ever check them if you want if you want just send me a text with generally what you want to talk about and I'll prioritize where it is because it's, it's you're right it's 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 too much so. I hope, Matt, I hope that's not just... I'm not sure. Changes. I think we've just unloaded on you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But um, I hope that's helped in some Matt, way. Matt, if you can help us. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much. And, um, yeah, don't don't get in touch. You know notifications. Yeah, you are thanks very much. Well, yeah, I think... Um, <laughs> I think yeah, I think I think that'll I think that'll do us this week. I think that was that was that was brilliant. And I hope, Matt, I hope that we've helped. If you need more life coaching, we got one from Ben Caddy, which we'll try and uh, we'll try and answer in the coming weeks when we when we're doing this again because it's an interesting one. I don't want to feel like we're, we're swerving it, mate. Um, 
and we'll take some more random questions in the future as well um but yeah thank you very much for watching for listening for liking sharing and subscribing um if you're on youtube subscribe to the channel do it right now if you've enjoyed the podcast and you're not subscribed do get it. subscribed and if you're listening on any of the audio platforms make sure you leave a review make sure you leave five stars all the positive things tell all your friends and family about it so if you're enjoying the content do let them know it because it, it does help and it means that we don't have to sit on our phones um constantly sharing and doing all that you do it for us if you enjoy the content share it, it makes it does make a massive difference chris thank you very much you, Paul. Uh, and we'll see you all soon Ta-da. <laughs>